All right, and testing, testing. I'll just make sure my audio works. Can somebody, can you guys hear me? I'm testing my own audio. Okay, good. Yeah, it works. Sorry, I just had a uh, an instance where I, my audio wasn't working for the first, I don't remember how long it was, 10 or 15 minutes. Okay, so, hello, I'm Anthony. If you don't, didn't know that already. Uh, the Posh Wolf. So uh, what I wanted to, what I'm going to be quick running through for those of you that are actually here already to start with uh, is I'm building a Dropbox PowerShell module uh, since we at TechSnips uh, have a need to be able to use Dropbox in our preferred uh, scripting language. Okay, sweet. Thank you. Thank you. Um, our preferred uh, scripting language is PowerShell. Uh, so we're writing the module in PowerShell. Uh, anyway, uh, I've already got, uh, let, me, let me pull it up. So I've already got it, the module started. Uh, it already works, um, so I can already, actually, you know what, let me make that a little easier for you guys to read. Uh, so I can already get files, um, I can already get uh, folder, or child items in a folder, um, but right now I have not been able to, uh, not set up the OAuth authentication, and for all the newbies to OAuth, hmm, Myself included. <laughs> um, I'm very glad that the the uh, most API docs uh, they actually have uh, the OAuth workflow, so you can read through it to refresh your memory. Uh, I've done this once before in one other module, so I'm going to be pulling heavily off of that. Uh, but also uh, using their docs. That's what we're, uh, that's what I'm looking at here. This is, of course, I'm pointing at my screen here, with this, as if you guys can see me pointing at my screen. Um, this, or if I lift my hand up, you can see it. This is how OAuth works. And I'm not a, an expert on OAuth. Uh, actually, we're going to scroll down a little further. Um, uh, so essentially, uh, you create an, uh, what the API refers to as an app. Uh, and it, they give you an ID and a secret. And you use that information uh, to launch a web page uh, that ha prompts the user to log in to their account on that service. And by logging into the account, they are giving your app um, permission to to use the, use your account. And so essentially, it returns um, an author. Uh, sorry, I'm gonna get, make sure I get this right. An authorization code, and then you use that authorization code to get an access token. So there is a difference, um, and I'm cheating by looking at uh, what you see on my screen. <laughs> uh, so what I need to do in the module is to first get an access token, or uh, say I'm already screwing it up, first get an authorization code, and you can see I've already got my parameters listed out here, app key, app secret, and then with that authorization code that the API returns me, assuming the user uh, authorizes me, uh, get an access token. So let's, uh, let's get started. Uh, so I figured the easiest way to do this uh, in a live stream is to just create a new app in the API, just in case you wanted to see how that's done. And obviously in different APIs, it's going to be different, uh, but same high level process, we'll call it. Uh, so I'm just going to create an app. Uh, and in this case, uh, I'm not doing any Dropbox business stuff just yet. Oh, hello. So for anyone else that's watching, that's uh, actually my wife that's watching me stream. So now I gotta be really, really careful about what I say. <laughs> uh, okay, so uh, I love you, Tony. By the way, uh, and Ellie, my daughter's probably watching too. If she's watching, that's cool. Uh, so anyway, uh, so in this case, and this is again specific to the Dropbox API, I'm just gonna do a full Dropbox access because uh, I'm I don't I'm not familiar with how complicated it is to create an app folder. So I'm just gonna go full Dropbox access, and we'll call it just to 
keep it separate from my cool first app. We'll call it the live stream app. So I'm gonna go ahead and create it. <laughs> there we go. Thank you guys. Um, and and Tony, uh, the the stream is a little delayed, so just just so you know. Uh, okay, so we created the app, uh, and you can see here that I have an app key. And in case you guys were wondering, it doesn't matter that you see my app key here. Uh, well, for a number of reasons. One, I'm going to delete this app after we're done. Uh, and two, uh, my Dropbox account. Well, you know, this wouldn't give you access to my Dropbox account. So, uh, but even if it did, uh, I've, I've only got, I've got a test Dropbox account that I'm logged into. Uh, so we've got an app key, an app secret, and this will actually need to be stored. Well, not stored somehow, because I don't want to store it in the module. Uh, so for someone downloading the module for the first time, <laughs> had no order. I don't have anyone pulling across my chest, so my buttons are secure. Don't worry. Um, uh, so, so anyone downloading the module, they'll need an app, or sorry, an app key and an app secret. So I'm going to need also create... I oh, actually don't don't need to create uh, a separate. Uh, I was thinking of creating a separate function for that. I don't need to do that because I can just have a request Dropbox authorization code and request those. Okay, so uh, now that we've got that prep work done, I'm gonna go back to their OAuth guide, and so they have a special. Oh, and it's an image. I can't even copy out of it. Uh, they have a special URI uh, for getting that authorization code. Ah, good. Okay, sweet. Um, oh, and something I did, I also, uh, you also need to supply is the redirect URI. So typically, uh, this is reserved for web apps. Uh, so you have like a service and it'll redirect you them back to your service. And so in your app, you create, uh, the redirect URI, you would supply this as well and include that in the app itself and I'm all t I'm talking about this web development stuff, but I've never actually done this. This is all theory. I'm a power drill guy. I'm not a web guy. So just because I say something some way doesn't mean it actually is. Uh, so I'm just going to do some self-promotion here. Uh, I'm going to have my blog as the redirect URI. Uh, so I, I believe uh, that you have to specify. Well, yeah, actually you saw in, in here that it is a required parameter the redirect URI. Uh, so what I'm also going to do is to add add a redirect URI to the parameters as well. Cool. So um, so authorization URL. Let's go ahead and pull this out of here. Okay. So we'll get an auth code. Yes, that's true. Okay. So Ah, uh, URI equals. All right, this is the boring part for anyone that's wondering. Okay, so what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna split this up. And it sounds like there's a baby in the hallway. Um, parameters equals. Okay, and we got client ID equals. Oh, interesting. I think this is app key. And this is where this is going to come into the uh, muddling that I talked about. Um, make that a variable. Okay, and since PowerShell isn't a web app, uh, we also need to have some way to launch a browser for a user to authenticate to. But we do need to also equals question mark and that question mark actually needs to be escaped parameters okay so that's the URI that we need to launch um, but since PowerShell is not a web app uh, we have to create a form and this is where I am going to look at some of the code that I already wrote uh, so I got an eBay module uh, that I use for tracking sales on eBay and get off codes what I'm gonna do uh, and I could actually re explain some of this. Well, it's been a little bit. When was, when was the last commit? Uh, it's been a few months, four months. <laughs> uh, so essentially what we're looking at here is, 
Oh, I actually do. So the eBay API required them to be encoded. We'll find out if we need that or not for Dropbox. Uh, so I'm creating a new form. Or do I need a web object first? Oh, yeah, this is a good point too. Gotta make sure the types are in there. Oh, okay. And we'll just add the types to the top so they only get loaded once, not every time you run uh, run uh, this command. Well, not that it's gonna be run a whole lot, I guess. Uh, could go either way. Uh, okay, so we're gonna create a form object. Oh, whoops. There we go. Uh, and, and yes, I should probably be using WPF for anyone that's wondering. Uh, but in this case, since I already have a WinForm version that works, I want to get that to work, and then we'll talk about making it a, let's see, so I'm building a web browser, uh, going to put it in that form. Uh, then we'll talk about making it uh, WPF. Actually, I'm going to keep my comments in as well. Uh, and actually, something that's really interesting that I should mention, since I'm copying this from my eBay module, is that I actually used um, another example to build this in my eBay module. Um, ooh, I honestly don't remember which one it was, but uh, one of the takeaways from that uh, is that uh, shared code is good code, right? Because then you can see uh, how other people do it, and Oh, so that's grabbing. So, sorry, I'm spacing out here. So you can see how other people do it, and then hope ultimately you can learn how to do it yourself, which is why I share my code. Uh, so, so what this script is going to do uh, that I'm looking at here is it's actually going to pull out. Uh, it's either going to find an error or a code uh, in the return because the return will be included in the uh, the request uh, URI. So it'll have a code equal. So much like we're building. Uh, our parameters with client ID equals and redirect URI equals. This is the same thing it will return with a code equals, and that will be the off, co off code, assuming the user uh, approved us. And the only testing we're going to, well, we can practice try both ways. Uh, okay. Um, so a lot of this stuff is, okay. So actually, you know what we can do is instead of building all this function and then testing the function, we're going to do this step by step. Okay. So first, We'll add, make sure the types are in. Um, oh, we've already got, uh, we've already got our app. I'm just, I'm just gonna set these here locally. Uh, app key equals, and for anyone just tuning in, I will be deleting these after we're done. Oh my goodness, what happened? Did I autocomplete nothing? Did I copy something weird? I must have copied something weird. Let's try that again. Or just, never mind. There we go. Er, oh, I'm all over the place today. App secret equals. Okay, perfect. Uh, oh, and then redirect URI. Redirect URI equals. Okay, so we've got our three settings in there. Uh, so we should, oh, and interesting, we don't actually need to specify the app secret. That doesn't sound right. Well, we'll see what happens. That's how I like to develop. Let's just see what happens. Fix it if it comes up. So the URI should now, and I have to actually, you know, I'll zoom this in a little more and then close the side pane. Uh, and is my head blocking that? No. Okay. Uh, so the URI here, we've got authorized question mark client ID and redirect URI. Does that need to be escaped? That might actually need to be encoded slightly differently. Um, here, let's let me let's look at some of the dot more the more verbose documentation and see if they've got something. So typically they'll have yes an off section nice. Uh, they'll have example calls. Oh, okay. So this is slash token from OAuth. They don't actually have. Oh, that's. Oh, that's sad. They don't actually have the creates an OAuth token from an OAuth one. Okay, or revoke. Okay, so they don't actually have 
Oh, that is sad. They don't actually have specific examples for they do. Just kidding. They do. Okay, sweet. So this is so we're on slash OAuth two slash token authorized. We're not on token yet. Authorize. Okay. Yes. Okay, sweet. So this is the great news about a lot of APIs is that they're documented. <laughs> not all of them, but most of them. Okay. Uh, so here we can actually see hopefully an example call. Uh, starts the OAuth off flow. So again, this is a web page. Let's use your sign in. So that's why we're building the, the web browser inside of a win form. Oh, okay. Uh, let's see. So URL structure slash authorize get app key can be found. Okay. So this is what I was looking for it's for the redirect URI. This must be the exact URI. Must be HTTPS. Code will be sent directly to the user who provided entry information into your app. Okay, so it doesn't say anything about it being encoded, but I do want to bet that it still needs to be URI encoded. Um, we can see if I did that here. Oh, so I did. Okay, so it does. Uh, so uh, URI encoding for anyone that's curious. Um, so it's you notice how you can't type spaces in URLs. They replace it with the percent twenty. Uh, that's just encoding for a URI. So uh, I'm going to take and let's see, coded URI. Oh, coded redirect equals. Okay, so I'm going to assume that it does need to be encoded since it it, it will actually be in a URI. Uh, and well, actually, you know, for kicks and giggles, we'll also encode the app key. Equals and then an app key. So now, if we actually run these two lines, we should get an encoded key, which actually isn't isn't any different. Encoded uh, redirect. There we go. So now we've got the slashes and the colon properly encoded. Cool. So that should actually work. And we want to replace this with an encoded key. <laughs> All right, love you, Tone. All right, so now that Tony's leaving, I can uh, say whatever I want, right? Uh, tell Ellie I say hi and that I love her too. Ellie's my daughter. Okay, so encoded redirect. Okay, so now. If we rebuild this URI, we should now get a. My head shouldn't be blocking that. No, no, no. We should now get a. Yeah, client ID equals, and then yeah, redirect URI equals. Okay, sweet. Nice. Okay, so uh, so that answered whether or not that needs to be encoded. Well, kind of. I'm assuming it needs to be encoded. Well, let's see what happens. <laughs> okay, so we're building the form. Let me expand this back down. Build our web object. I uh, got our script for pulling out the code, so it's doing a regex match on either error equals or code equals. And since the ampersand is a terminator in URI parameters, that's where anything that's not an ampersand. Uh, and then closing the form. Okay, so I think that's it, actually. Let's find out. Worst case scenario, this just doesn't work, and we have to figure out what's going on. Okay, so we'll add the completed script. Oh, and where's that match? Well, I don't remember how to get the uh, the actual uh, format show dialog. So that's void query output equals web URL dot query. Uh, okay. Okay. So let's steal that from my other module and get that going there. Okay. So. We've got the web browser added. Let's add in all the controls. Oop, did that not, did I hit the wrong? There we go. And uh, let's run it, see what happens. Oh, uh, something came up on the other screen. Okay, so that uh, obviously didn't work. <laughs> uh, okay, so uh, the good news is we can actually, oops, we can actually take and copy this 
URI straight into Chrome, and that's where we see we went wrong. So dropbox.com slash show two slash authorize, client ID equals and redirect URI equals your files are still safe. Check out our help center forums for help. Okay, so that isn't helpful at all. So I have no idea why that didn't work. Uh, so let's 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 uh, refresh ourselves with the documentation. So we have client ID, oh, 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 and response type equals code. We forgot that. Yeah. Okay. Since we're getting our code, we have to tell them that we actually want that for them to return it. Does that break it? Apparently, but I'm not sure. Uh, okay, so boop, and ampersand. Yeah. Okay. Okay, so let's try that again. Uh, oh, you know what? Did I even tell this web browser property? La. Ah. So <laughs> the form didn't work because I gave it the wrong URI. Okay. So uh, let's try that again. Uh, so I'm just gonna actually, you know, let's, let's just build this from scratch. That's funny. <laughs> okay, so show dialog, and again, okay, so this is actually what we want. So you can see that uh, it's having a sign in with the live stream app, which is the name of our app. Uh, so if we call it something else, it'd be something else. Um, and I gotta remember if, did I use a generic LastPass generated password? Let's find out. Okay, yeah, give me a second. Let me uh, pull this off screen and actually grab my uh, last pass password for Dropbox. Uh, sorry about that. Um, Dropbox. Okay, and we are going to look at the password. Oh, yeah, it's a long generic password. Okay. Uh, so what I will do is copy the password, come back. Okay, so we're going to try this again. Paste in the correct password, sign in. And what we should see is, make sure you trust this developer. Okay, well, I trust myself. <laughs> yeah, I share my passwords at the internet. No, thank you. <laughs> um, okay, so cancel. Okay, so I'm, it's, no, it's not password one. And uh, th thanks for all the password help, guys. I appreciate it. Yeah, password one, too. <laughs> uh, okay, so uh, so I do, of course, trust myself. So I'm going to hit continue. And we'd like to access the files and folders in Dropbox. Uh, I'm going to hit allow. Okay, and you saw the redirect there briefly. It showed my blog. If you're familiar with it or not, you should visit it. That's yeah, self-promotion. Uh, so now... We should actually be able to, so remember web, uh, web is the, our web browser object that we created. Uh, so we can actually, well, let's, let's actually look at the query. Yeah, don't trust myself. <laughs> uh, and, and that's, oh, so there we go. So now we got a code um, and we need to parse that. And so you can see, I'm actually gonna parse the query string and get the query output. And so now the query output looks like, okay, that was a major fail. Um, did I miss something? Okay, so, um, all right, so I screwed that up somehow. So parse query string code. Okay, did I, maybe I've got another step in my code. And again, I'm gonna look at, oh, Query output dot keys. Okay, it's a hash table. Yeah, 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 that makes sense. Oh, okay. So let's 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 try that. Not code. Okay, so there we go. So that's the authorization code. That's not actually uh, that's not a code we can use in our API requests yet, but we can. Uh, so so either we can hard code the code in there, or we can do what I did up here. And again, I'm just going to copy this and paste this in. Uh, so response, so I'm creating an ha empty hash table and then adding it in. And uh, there we go. So now response should be just the code value. Perfect. That's exactly what I wanted. Okay, and of course, we will then return this. 
So there's a couple of ways to deal with the authorization code. Either, uh, so in my, if you create a full-blown PowerShell Dropbox API, that, so yes, actually, the answer is yes. Um, what I've got, uh, you uh, may have missed the first part. I, I've just started it uh, so I can get Dropbox children files, folder zips, uh, and item metadata. Um, but the goal, yes, is to have a full-blown uh, API module, essentially. Uh, but right now, I'm just trying to add OAuth to it. And all right, yeah, I'll see you later, Cisco. Um, and once we get OAuth to it, I guess that will go from there. Um, so what was the next step? Oh, so uh, there's a number of ways to handle the auth authorization codes. Uh, so in my eBay module, and I'm still kind of on the fence about whether or not this was a good idea, I actually created a custom class. So you can see I created an eBay API auth code class. Uh, and I did that so I could um, pipe data from this. So this is the get auth code function. So I could pipe it from the get auth code to the get access token. So remember, the access token is what you use the auth code to retrieve. Uh, and I could specify a, ty a, a type. Um, we're going to skip that for now. Uh, and I'll come back to writing classes another time because uh, kind of could be good. <laughs> uh, hey, if you guys, you know, let me know. I'm Pacific time. Uh, so I just realized, like what Cisco was saying, if this is in the middle of his lunch. Um, but if you guys you got better times for me to stream, let me know. Um, I'm, I'm around for other times. So, if, you know, send me a quick PM or let me know in the chat. If you like watching me, let me know and I can stream uh, different times. I just chose 10 a.m. because it's, I just thought it was a good time. <laughs> that's That's the entire idea there. Uh, okay, so then what I'm going to return is I'm just going to return uh, this. I'm actually just going to return. Hmm. I'm just going to return the code. Response. Well, so if it was an error, it could be an error. So I'm just going to return the entire hash table for now. And we will deal with that another time. So I am going to add this function into my session here. And remember what I called it. <laughs> request, oh my goodness, let me put my hands in the right position on my keyboard. Request Dropbox authorization code. Maybe I should shorten that to just auth code. Uh, so app key is app key. App secret is app secret, because I saved these from before. And then redirect is redirect. All right, so let's see what happens. What we should get, oh, sorry, sorry. So what we should get is that, oh, huh, I've already connected it to my user account. So I don't, oh, I'm already logged in because it's using the same. Okay, so let's let's actually cancel this. Um, oh, so there you go. So that's what you get when it doesn't work. You get errors. Nice. Okay, so returning the hash table is a good idea instead of just the straight code. Uh, so let me. Let me trash my PowerShell session and make, make a new one. Uh, I'll grab that uh, app it's key and secret again. And again, for anyone that's watching, this is all very specific to the stream. So while the app key and the app secret uh, will work for you right now, as soon as I know the stream, I will be deleting those. Um, okay. Oh, and then redirect. Uh, and uh, and I'll just turn in, tune in. The Dropbox API is very specific that you have to supply a redirect that you have uh, explicitly stated in your app that you create in their API. So that's why I'm just using, well, and besides, it's my blog. So why not use my blog, right? Uh, okay. And so now let me add this into my session. Oh, get rid of that. Go away. Bye. Okay. And request Dropbox authorization code app key equals. Oh my goodness! I probably could just create a, create a splat, but 2020 hindsight, right? Okay, so now we should oh, open up my other screen. So now we got this again. So we got my email address and grab my password. 
that no, I won't share it with you guys, even if you ask nicely. Okay, and sign in. All right, and of course it's gonna tell us to make sure we trust this developer, I trust myself. Let's see, live stream app, so again, that's the name of the app I created. We're gonna need to allow it. Bam, we got our code. I wonder if that's the same one from before. I don't know, actually. Uh, okay, uh, so anyway, well, I'm gonna take this code, and I'm gonna say, code? No, no, we'll call it something more, more, more explicit. Auth code. Oh, my wife's texting me. Oh. Okay, auth code equals bam. Okay, so the next step is to, well, commit this. Um, now get an authorization code. And yeah, this is this repo is public for anyone that wants to access it. Um, it's in the TechSnips organization since this is a TechSnips module. Uh, well, I mean, this is a Dropbox module, but we're developing it for use with TechSnips. Anyone, you guys want to grab it, use it, um, share it. Uh, it's got the MIT license, so do what you want with it. Uh, okay, so I've got the auth code. Uh, so the next thing is to get an access token. Uh, and uh, I just realized you guys might be wondering why I'm showing you my auth code. It's because my Dropbox account has three pictures in it from when I tried to sell a router online. So if you guys want to see a picture of my old wireless router, you can use my auth code to get an access token to retrieve that. Woohoo! Okay, uh, so one of the things that I like to do in my uh, API modules is uh, so auth config, uh, I'm going to make that a script scoped variable, so it'll be a module scoped variable. I don't know why. OK, so this is actually wrong. Uh, this should be authorization code equals auth config dot auth code. So if I decided to add the auth code, uh, hey, how's it going? Uh, so if I decided to add the auth code to my script scoped uh, variable that stores my credentials, this is what it will look like. Um, I'll leave that in there for now. And okay, so if access token, so if, I guess I don't need to say if, I can just actually say uh, parameter validate not null or empty, not null or empty, bam. Okay, so there you go, I can get rid of that if statement. Okay, so now to figure out, hey, how's it going? Just generating a, writing a module. Uh, so now we need to, so we've got the authorization code. Uh, so let's, now to get to get the token, here we go. So this URI again, it's going to be special. Well, I think. This other one was, was it API dot? No, it's dub, dub, dub. Okay, so there we go. We're just gonna do the same structure here. So base URI equals. You know, I, I, uh, I don't have a blog post that shows how I, what I've got set up. I'm using um, uh, Streamlabs OBS, uh, and I've just set a chat thing onto my stream, which is, you know, right above where the thing is on my stream. Uh, I'll do that. Actually, that's not a bad idea. Uh, here, I, I, I think I can just show you. Um, I don't think there's any, no, this is everyone's chat stuff here. So this is what it looks like if I can bring it onto the stream. Oh, that's trippy. <laughs> uh, so I actually, uh, you can specify, so if you're familiar with OBS, this is just a reskinned OBS with some additional features. Uh, you can actually add in a chat source and it pulls it uh, from, <laughs> yeah, Inception. <laughs> uh, it pulls it uh, from your uh, Twitch account. Uh, so it, uh, you, I, oh, it's been a while. But you got, I think you put in your key or something or maybe I'll then get with your account and then you can add this. Well, I guess my hand doesn't go up high enough, uh, but you can add, you can add it wherever you want. You can also add in, if you've seen people live stream video games, you can also add in the, oh, we've got a new subscriber or, Oh, we got a new donation, that sort of thing. Uh, but yeah, I'll do blog post on. That's not a bad idea. Uh, 
Okay, uh, so back to getting my user token. Uh, so I've got my base URI. Oh, sorry. Turn the text for my wife. Apparently I put my garbage out on the wrong week. <laughs> uh, okay, so, and they uh, need some data. Okay, so uh, uh, the unfortunate thing about APIs is that they're all, most of the examples are in curl. Uh, so you gotta learn to convert curl to invoke REST method or web request, depending on what you do. Uh, so in this case, uh, we just need to create, actually, I'm just gonna copy this. So I don't have to switch back and forth. And so we need to create, um, excuse me, a, a header. Well, well, first of all, we need to create uh, some data. So dash D in curl uh, is creating a, uh, it's, I think a D is for data, uh, but essentially creating a, what invoke rest method refers to as a body. So at the end of this, we'll have invoke rest method. Oop, not invoke rest meth. Been watching too much, watching too much Breaking Bad. Okay, so invoke rest method URI, uh, which will be the what well, I'll set to the URI, and the method is going to be the method post. So in this case, post, and then I'm going to create some headers, which will have my auth in it, and then my body, which will be a JSON body. Uh, so what we're looking at here, everything with dash D is uh, is going to be in the body. Uh, I'm going to send it JSON, so I will have to have my headers uh, equals uh, content type dash type. So this is telling telling the API what type of content I'm sending it. Application slash JSON. Uh, and so that's in the headers. And so dash U in curl, that's the users for basic. Uh, I'm using... That's a good question. Can we go to about? We can go to about. Here's a version I'm using. Uh, apparently it's from the 7th of January, uh, 1.30.2. Uh, I haven't had issues with it, but we'll, we'll see if it crashes. Uh, we'll give it a try. Uh, okay, so, uh, so with curl, the dash u specifies um, a, a user colon password in basic authentication. And to do that, grand time code. Okay, so to do that, we actually need to specify an authorization header in inside of the headers, an authorization equals, and it's gonna be basic space, and then it's gonna be our encoded, oh, let me do double quotes here. Uh, it's gonna be our encoded auth. Uh, here, let me show you what that looks like. So I need app key and app secret, okay, so. App secret. Uh, and so what we're going to do is we're going to open a, a new window of VS Code and copy uh, the base 64 encoding from another module I did. <laughs> That's what we're going to do. Uh, okay. Um, Give me a second here. So where is it at? Oh, it's a, it's a private. Uh, so here we go. So this, here, I'll copy this over and then show you what I'm doing here. Uh, so the encoded authorization, so sorry, basic authentication with invoke rest method, uh, you specify, oop, this is specific from the other one. You specify the user colon password and then convert it to base64. So I'm getting the bytes UTF. Uh, so the coding is specific to each API. So I learned the hard way on this one. It took me a little, an unfortunate amount of time to figure out that Unicode get bytes is not the same as UTF-8 get bytes to the API. Uh, and then converting it to a base64 string. Uh, so in this case, it's going to be, uh, so we can see the, the user from curl again. Uh, so it's going to be app key colon app secret uh, and I've just got a I just got a back tick there escaping the colon uh, okay so I got an encoded auth so I've got a basic authentication set up there so I'm actually I've already got that included so I'm going to delete that uh, so the rest of these are dash D so they're body 
And so we can go body equals, we're going to create a hash table, and then, oh, not plus, convert to, we're going to convert to JSON, because uh, he's, uh, because uh, we're sending content type equals application JSON, so we're going to send it JSON data. And we need code and redirect URI again. Okay, so we are going to string redirect. Uh, and so this, so adding all this in kind of comes back to, uh, do we want to make a class for it? Because uh, I made a class for it, then I could pass a single object that already has all that information that I specified in the get auth code. Uh, whoa, what am I doing? Not pasting that. Good thing that wasn't my password I pasted. Uh, okay, code, actually, this is what I wanted to copy. Uh, so code equals auth code, I'm gonna paste it down here. Uh, so code equals, we have authorization code, and then grant type equals authorization code, and then redirect URI equals redirect URI. So we're going to convert that to JSON. That's the body. And then the headers is, of course, headers. OK, so I think I think that's it. Uh, so we got code grant. Yep, we copied and pasted that. So I'm going to delete that out of there. So we got a base URI. Oh, but we don't build the complete. URI, do we need to? Let's check the docs. Uh, no, we don't. So that's the URI we need. Uh, so we're going to send it the user, the data. OK. Sweet. So we already did the authorized stuff. OK. So this should work with our auth code. So we've got an auth code. Do we have the app key? Yes, we have the app key. We have the app secret from before still. And we have our redirect. Sweet. OK. So. First time through this, I'm not going to use the the function because uh, I don't feel like dealing with breakpoints right now. So I got app key, app secret. So I'm going to say redirect URI equals redirect. Okay, so we right, load base URI encoded off equals app key, app secret. If we look at encoded off, this is literally just a base64 string. Looks a little short. App whoop, app key. App secret. Oh, I guess those aren't that long of strings. Okay. Uh, and then our headers, we've got our content type, we've got our authorization. I don't think we need anything else. We'll find out. So header, and that that's that's a hash table. So invoke rest method takes a hash table. And then our body, well, let's make sure that actually came out right. Headers. Sweet, basic, yep, there we go. And then our body, this is going to be a JSON string. So if we look at this code null. Oh, <laughs> Code is authorization code. So authorization code equals auth code. Okay, let's try that again. So now if we look at the body, we have a code equal. So that's the code we got from before, which is time restricted. Ooh. Uh, I don't know how long the time restriction is, so we'll find out. So we should be able to invoke rest method. I'm actually going to set that to a response variable, so because I don't think we can do it more than once. Uh, I cannot validate primary URI. Oh, we did not do the URI, so base URI. Okay, so let's try that again. Bad request. Dang it. Okay. Uh, good news is we can still look at that error. Uh, so I found a quick function to just look at the actual error returned by the API. Missing required field grant type. Invalid request. Okay. Hey, the good news was it didn't crash VS Code, right? Uh, okay. I thought we did specify grant type in the body, right? Grant underscore type. And we did specify that. I wonder if that needs to be a header. Yeah, I I don't know. I haven't had any problem with invoke rest method crashing. Mm. Uh, oh, I'm, I'm using... Uh, Windows PowerShell. I thought I might be using Win PowerShell Core or something. Uh, okay, so let's... Where are we at? Access token. Okay, so it doesn't like the grant type in the body. That's strange because it... Hmm. Well, here. 
let's let's uh, go back to my uh, where I've done this before and look at git user token um, wait I I'll confirm that's my confirm uh, git eBay user token what did I do here so I've got my base URI very similar encoded off client ID client secret which is the app key app secret uh, let's see, build the headers. No, I got a content type authorization, yeah. Body equals, gram type equals auth code. Oh, interesting. So in this case, I actually built the body into the uh, body. Hmm, submitted them as straight, straight parameters, didn't send it to JSON. So, oh, content type form URL encoded. Okay, so let's... Let's see if maybe they actually specified that. A JSON encoded dictionary, including an access token type or name like re Oh, rich returns. Interesting. Errors. Okay, yeah, bad input is probably what we got. Uh, dang it. Okay, so usually. Oh, okay. So I, I, I think I okay. So instead of this being a a, um, a value equal or a, a key equals value, um, this is just a string. I think. Let's try it. Uh, so what this should be is whoop, no, that's still there. So we should be able to do this. Let's find out equals. Let's see how they formatted that equals. Nope, no. Oh, and the redirect URI probably needs to be URL encoded. Probably. Let's uh, get an idea if I did that and uh, for my eBay. I did. Okay, okay. All right, well, let's do that again here. Okay, so encoded redirect equals redirect uri and then we're going to say encoded redirect and the authorization code did that look like it needed to be encoded i don't know right instead of hash table since it needs a string that's a good point because that's what i did in the or I think that's what I did into my yeah in my eBay module. I joined them. I could have done a join with an ampersand. I don't know why I did it this way. Um, but I think we can send them JSON data since we're specifying an application. Con sorry, a content type of JSON. We're gonna find out. But wait, this isn't JSON. This is just a. You're right. Okay, an array of strings. Okay. Yep. Yep. Not URL. So. And I'm not an expert on the URI versus URL, but it's my understanding. I call it URI simply because Vogue REST method, the parameter is URI. That's the only reason. It's my understanding that they're very similar, but slightly different. Um, I read somebody's blog post on the URI versus URL, and I, I, I'm sorry, I don't remember what, it, what the big difference was. Uh, but that's the only reason I'm doing it here is because in Vogue REST method, the parameter is URI. So just, just, um, yeah, yeah, that's, that's kind of, that's kind of what I'm doing too. <laughs> uh, okay. So, but you're right. This isn't a hash table of key values. So can we make a JSON array? We'll find out. Uh, but if this doesn't work, I'll just do the same thing what I did before. Um, I'm just, yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm just curious to see if we can, since we're telling it, we're saying it JSON, if we can actually send it JSON instead of that, uh, uh, that other type that I was sending it. Uh, so we got encoded. Okay, so actually, well, I need to probably, yeah, I didn't actually populate. Uh, there you go. So now I got the redirect URI. Okay. Um, headers should still be the same. All right, so let's remote server. Yeah, okay. Uh, so get last error. It's probably missing required field grant type error. Okay, okay. So yeah, we're just going to create a string. Uh, and set this to B. Yeah. 
form URL encoded. Okay, so we'll recreate that headers, and then what we'll do is we'll simply join. I think that will do it. Yeah, that looks good. Okay. Okay, so I see URI didn't change. Headers got those updated. And okay. Oh. Code has expired. Okay. Okay, so that's good. We got we got a at least it liked the request. Okay, so uh before I commit that, let's try the let's try requesting again. Let's see if I can go back far enough in my history here to just Oh. I might be trying way too hard here. Request. Okay, so let's re-request. Re oh, of course. It, so it, requesting again. Going to allow. All right. So then auth code equals sweet or um, authorization code equals. That was smart. Okay. All right. So let's let's rebuild that body. Um, and that is not lined up. There you go. That's driving me nuts. Okay. And nothing else has changed. So this should work. URL is a subset of a URI. So URI can be more than URL. URL is the old name of URI. So, oh. Sweet. Well, let's, uh, let's see what that Venn diagram looks like. Uh, for anyone that's curious, that URI versus URL. Uh, oh, where where was the did, did I miss the Venn diagram? Is it down further? Ah, interesting. URC data UR URN. Huh. Well, that's great. Yeah, good diagram. Thanks for thanks for grabbing that. So there you go, URI versus URL. <laughs> uh, has defined by WC3. Okay, does that make sense that they're they're the ones that are finding that? Yeah, I'm I'm gonna I'm gonna be straight with you. I I'm still six one half dozen the other. I mean it's yeah that <laughs> yeah. Uh, in my opinion, they both make sense. So I, I, I don't have a strong opinion of it either way. Um. So I, just, I use URI, so I'm using URI here. So let's see what that response actually looks like, um, since it supposedly succeeded. Sweet, access token. Oh, and it gave you my account ID live on stream. Nice. Uh, oh, well. <laughs> okay, so with this access token, uh, response.access token, we should be able to, uh, let's, let's do get Dropbox children. Oh, what? I didn't actually, okay reading code I wrote like last week and I don't understand it. Uh, oh, access token equals auth config access. Okay. <coughs> Sorry. So this, the way this module is written, uh, in the, I have an invoke Dropbox AP call, API call module that does all of my work with an API. Uh, so for instance, if we look at get Dropbox children, uh, I got the parameters that I'm accepting, and then it does at the very end and wrote Dropbox API call. So it calls that other commandlet. And because of that, I have the access token only on the invoke Dropbox API call commandlet. Oh, huh. I tried just running that line instead of the whole thing. So let's get that loaded in. Let's get get Dropbox children loaded in and do a get Dropbox child item. And the way I wrote it, it'll list the root if it's nothing's passed. Oh, crap. Okay. Uh, hold on a second. Uh, since my invoke call takes, uh, has the, here, I'll show you instead of just explaining it because you can see my screen. Since the invoke call, it has, whoop, 
uh, it specifies a certain variable. I'm just going to say auth config, config dot access token equals access token. Okay. Or I'll just create a new object. How about we do that? <laughs> Let's get some objects. Oh, oh, really? Okay, we'll try that again. Uh, so we have what? Access token. Access token. Access token. Okay, so now it should automatically pull that in. So if we do a git Dropbox child item. Ah, there we go. Sweet. And for those of you that actually want to see this here, this is what the output of uh, this looks like. So you can see I've got one folder uh, slash test, and these are all the, the folders. Each of these objects is an item in my Dropbox. Uh, so if we, for instance, wanted to get the children item of slash test, we can say get Dropbox children item slash test. And this should list out all the image files I have in there. Yeah. yeah. And why don't I just show you? Uh, so, oh, yeah, yeah there you go. See, uh, the router that I was trying to sell, but I've gotten rid of now. Uh, so this is what the test folder this lo what it looks like in the web UI and uh, what it looks like using uh, that git uh, Dropbox child item uh, command that I wrote. Uh, so, okay, so the last thing to do now can turn the code into a user token. And I don't, yeah, so that token doesn't actually expire. Interesting. So I've, uh, some APIs I've worked with, they actually will give you an expiring token and then a separate token to renew it. So you get two tokens, kind of interesting. Um, but this just gives you a token and I'm guessing, actually I'm curious now, uh, I bet we can see in the settings, um, connected apps. Yeah, there we go. So you can see that. So this cool first app. This is the one that, in the API, you can actually um, uh, generate the token for you. Uh, but with the live stream, I actually wrote the code to generate for it. Does Spotify have an API? I don't know. I have no idea. Uh, I would go to Google and search for Spotify. API. Yeah, they do. Uh, oh, sweet. Cool. Yeah, I mean, I, I, I don't have any familiarity with it, um, but uh, writing a PowerShell module for it is definitely something you could do. Uh, specify. So it looks like they do have an OAuth-based uh, API. So, yeah, yeah, you're welcome. So this code... Oh, sweet! Yeah, well, I've I've done I've uh, done some streaming on some of my other modules. Nice. Um. Uh, but this one, if you guys are interested, is is uh, Dropbox. It's right here. Uh, Techstep slash ps Dropbox, and I will. I believe I can send you chat from here. Yeah, there you go. If you guys wanted to see it. And I will even uh, push these changes to it right now. There you go. Now updated. Uh, well, the build's not updated. Uh, I guess I could build it too. Real quick. Let's see, build. And there we go. Oh, of course, it doesn't like the fact that I specify a docs folder, but don't actually have anything in it. Let me just clear this out. No, what I'll do is I'll build it and I'll get that uploaded too. So if you guys want to actually play with it, you don't have to worry about building it yourself. Uh, let me get rid of this. There we go. There we go. So now it's built. Uh, oh, and Sorry, PSKit has a bug in it that changes that. Okay. Uh, and then the last step, what we'll do here is oh, updated build script. 
We won't play this. <laughs> this is actually kind of funny. The way I create my modules when I first start out is I just copy the the layout that I've done in another module uh, and all the build stuff. Uh, so you can see I've got I've got a what I use as my standard layout. Uh, so I've got a build directory where I have my build script dump the PSM one in when it builds it. Um, I've got private directory or source and then private and public. Um, and for specifically doing REST API modules, uh, I am uh, I I kind of have a format I follow. Um, I've got just the invoke invoke uh, API call uh, commandlet, and then each of the the gets the sets then all the other modules will reference that. Uh, for calling the API, unless, like the uh, request Dropbox authorization code, unless this one, for instance, uh, has like uh, needs to get an auth code, then obviously it's not going to uh, reference that invoke Dropbox API call. But you know, my uh, why is this? Oh, I called this the wrong thing. Save Dropbox user token. Oh, uh, so I, I'm intending to save the token once I've retrieved it and I, I'll, I'll add that in uh, but this one could actually reference that invoke Dropbox API call there's no reason it oh, I'm blowing smoke here let's make it work uh, yeah and to respond to your, your comment about uh, Node.js I I don't know any JavaScript or Node.js for that example uh, uh, I PowerShell guy. I do this because I like working in PowerShell. I don't do a lot of web stuff, but occasionally, being able to use PowerShell against a REST API module is, or REST API, uh, is useful. Uh, so uh, one of the things with the Dropbox API call is that I just need to specify uh, a resource. And I can get rid of base URI resource resource, but then I do I do need to specify the header, the body, because these are different than the normal headers. Because in my invoke API call, I actually have uh, my base headers, <laughs> and I set the content type in those headers. Okay, so I'll need to switch that around to get it to actually work. Uh, because in my, uh, in case you missed it, in the save Dropbox access token, I actually specify the content type in the header. So I'll either need to, in my invoke API call commandlet, either need, do you need to replace it? So I could do an if hash table uh, dot contains key content type, then replace it. Um, yeah, actually I could do that. He's got me thinking. Uh, oh, uh, it also sets the authorization. Hmm. So if header, base header is key. Oh, actually, no, I, okay. I'm sit, sitting here making stuff up. So it already sets that. So this should, should work. Let's make it work. Uh, okay, so we've got, we've got our header. We've got our body. What else do we need to pass it? Oh, method, 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 method. Oh, and that's probably not even going to work because. Oh, I didn't tell it when I was sending it. Wow, that is a lot of. Error box not found. I can't find the page you're looking for. Oh, because I didn't specify the resource. That's why. Okay. Okay. Let me try that again. All right. So that looks better. Not a 404. We got 400. And unknown APIs function. What? Okay. Okay. Never mind. Um, so let me explain why that doesn't work. So in the URI I've got here, my base URI, I'm doing API to Dropbox, API.com slash OAuth2 slash token. And then in my invoke Dropbox API call, my base URI is actually slash 
version. So slash two, since it's specific to an API version. So I'm gonna make the executive decision here as the author <laughs> of this module and delete that. And then we're just gonna, <clears throat> we're gonna do our own uh, our own invoke rest method and then return the response. Oh, I cleared it out. I don't even remember what it looked like. I have to scroll up. Uh, but return the response dot access token is what we're going to do for now. And what I'll do is I'll add in some uh, some saving. Like, I scheduled two hours for this and it's only been one. Let's do that now. Okay, so. Uh, what I want to do, what I'm going to do, is to now save all this information uh, locally. Well, let me first let me first commit this so we know that it works. Uh, now it actually returns. Okay. Uh, so what I like to do with uh, building a uh, REST API module in PowerShell is to, uh, for tokens like this, you need to save them somewhere, uh, and so. Uh, typically, what I've done is to uh, create a. Oh, I can actually show you. Uh, here we go under users. So, oh, whoops. Let me, let me actually bring this back over here. So, under users, I just create a new dot folder. Uh, so, for instance, uh, for my uh, Sherpa desk module, um, I just got a credentials.json, and this is actually. Um, let's testing my memory here. I'm, this is actually the encoded uh, credentials. I'm not going to share them with you, but uh, it's uh, the output of convert to secure string in PowerShell uh, just saved uh, locally. So it's, you know, we could probably have a debate on how secure that is, but it's good enough for this application, in my opinion. Uh, so uh, to save that, here, what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to open up uh, one of my other modules, and I actually have. Uh, so what I do is I have a uh, a function that will get the save path for it, and I do this so that uh, I can support uh, PowerShell Core or Windows PowerShell. The Dropbox uh, credential save path and get. I'm going to be a little more explicit with the name there instead of what I'm using for my Sherpa Desk module. Uh, so if this is on PS Core, it saves it in. PowerShell secure string can be decrypted using the same computer or the same. Yeah, yeah. Uh, so, uh, uh, and this is testing my understanding of it. But what it does is it, so uh, the those secure string commandlets, they have a, a, a key parameter, so you can specify a key for encrypting and decrypting. And it generates that key somehow based on information from the computer and user you're using. Yeah, you are correct. Um, uh, OK, so uh, to find a location to save that, so if I'm on P PowerShell Core, I just got some if is Linux and if is Windows, because uh, the environmental variables are different. I don't have a Mac computer to test it on, so I don't have an else if is Mac. <laughs> um, so it will return nothing if it's on Mac, which I probably should return error instead. but. This is good enough for now. So we're going to call this PS Dropbox. All right, and this saved your... Okay, so it's going to save it in the user profile dot PS Dropbox. Cool. So I'm going to save that. And then, uh, because I like what I've done here, so I saved it. Yeah, you know what? I'm just going to copy this. Uh, so I have a separate... Ooh, new file, save Dropbox auth config.ps. So I'm going uh, to I'm gonna create a, uh, a separate place, or sorry, a separate uh, commandlet to actually save it. So get, so again, this is copied over. So I'm going to rename this, Dropbox, get Dropbox. Credential save. Yeah, I'm sorry. Max can't use my module. Uh, uh, that being said, if you guys want to open a pull request and add in Max support, oh, but 
at the same time. So right now the secure string uh, uh, functions don't actually work on Linux without specifying a key. So they haven't uh, implemented the generating the key based on the user and computer yet. So even though it looks like this is uh, PowerShell core compatible, it's not because it's going to depend on that. Well, I, I could show you. It's going to depend on the uh, the secure string functions, which I've got here. Uh, and it throws an error on, on PowerShell core on Linux. I haven't tried it on Macs. So again, poor Macs. I'm sorry. Okay. Uh, so I'm just going to keep it standard credentials.json because I am a simple person. Okay. So encrypted auth equal or dot property name. Oh, so this is assuming that the auth config variable has already been set. Mm. So what we're going to do is request Dropbox access token. What? Deny. Oh, so I random key and pass it in. So, so yes, I could generate a key and pass it in, uh, but I would have to then to be able to recover. Uh, those encrypted strings, I would have to store that key somehow. And how do you store that key without just simply obfuscating it somewhere? I don't have a good answer for that. So I, I just made the decision to uh, leave it broken for now. Um, and yeah, yeah, exactly. Dead, not worth the trouble. <laughs> uh, okay, so I actually wrote this uh, save Dropbox user token in a wrong spot. Um, so I'm actually going to rename this. Okay. Um, so I'm sorry if this screws everyone up. Oh, uh, access token, access token. Okay. Uh, oh, and that needs to be fixed from when we were playing with it. Okay. Okay. The rest of it's good. Okay. Uh, okay. So. So we've got we can get the Dropbox access token. Uh, we can request. Oh, I call it request. Get. Gosh darn it! I'm screwing myself up with all these different names. Okay, so I'm gonna delete request Dropbox access token and call my get. I'm gonna call this request. Kind of standardize uh, where I'm asking for uh, the credential. So I'll switch that around and also rename it here. Hopefully you guys weren't uh, set on the names I had before. Okay. Uh, okay. So the next thing. So I can either have good documentation on how to do this authentication process, or I can write and invoke Dropbox authentication commandment. That's what we're going to do. Okay. And so what this, uh, let me explain my reasoning. What this function is going to do uh, is it's going to ask for the, well, I'll, I'll do two parameter sets. So if you already have an, an access token, it'll ask for an access token. Uh, if you don't, then it'll ask for the app key, app secret, and uh, redirect URI. And then uh, in this function, which I'll make a public and make the request functions both private, um, I will get the access token uh, by throwing up that uh, that form and then use that to just immediately request the Dropbox auth code. Okay, cool. I like that idea. Okay, so we can copy that straight over. Oop, minus the auth code. And now we're going to request drop. This is actually going to be a really simple function. Request Dropbox auth code with the my intelligence. Oh, I forgot. It was it app key. I think it was app key. Yeah, app secret. Yeah, sweet. And then, of course, my redirect URI. Redirect URI. Okay. Uh, and so off code equals. Uh, so then we'll get the off code there. Ooh, now I got to remember. So the off code. Uh, was a uh, hash table. Mm, we may just have to do it again so I can see what it looks like. <laughs> uh, 
and yeah, we're gonna do it again so I can see what it looks like. Uh, okay, so let's. I already have. Okay, I already have all these. Uh, so we're gonna just go. We're gonna do this again. Uh, and it. Worked? Okay, it, it just flashed up and went away. Maybe because I've already authorized it? Uh, not sure. Okay, so this is what the auth code works like. So we will have to say if auth code dot contains key code. Because other because if, if remember the error uh, we saw earlier. Well, let's let's make it error. Oh well, I don't know if it's gonna let me. Yeah, it's just immediately going. So I'll have to deauthorize it. Get what an error looks like. And, uh, and then write code to deal with that. So if it does contain the code though, we can then request Dropbox. Oh, I haven't actually added this in. Oh, because I renamed it, yeah. Okay. So request, uh, where we're at, invoke. So request Dropbox, Dropbox box, uh, access token. And auth code is going to be auth code, code, App key is going to be app key again. App secret is going to be app secret again. And redirect URI is going to be redirect URI again. And if we cared about people reading this, we'd write it as splats, but I'm going to test it first and see what happens. Uh, okay, so I'm going to do a response equals, and I believe our most recent iteration of response is empty because we tried running again. Okay, so I don't remember what that response looked like. Okay, so I will need to go into uh, my Dropbox and unauthorize my app. Okay, I think it's just a matter of, yeah. I think it's just a matter of removing it. And, hmm, that's a good point. Uh, I, I, I'm fairly certain because I I, I, I ran it before um, and it returned an error that it just emptied out uh, that variable. So we'll just we'll just reauthorize it. Uh, okay, cool. So yeah, we got the same before you connect this app. Continue. Allow. Okay, so now we can see what the auth code actually looks like. Oh, I was gonna I was gonna have it do an error too. Uh, this is good enough. Okay, so off code code so we'll see what the response looks like here so response equals was that i must have in the request dropbox access token i must have had it just return that token which is actually all we need uh, okay so i'm actually going to call this token since it's not that hash table that i thought it was going to be okay so then so then what we can do is we can decide whether or not we want to save everything or just that token. I'm going to make the executive decision here to just save that token uh, because if, oh, we didn't do the, uh, the parameter sets. Uh, because if that token, that token never expires, so we don't have to renew it. Because in the other modules I wrote, uh, you, I had to actually store the, Oh, I don't remember. It was, I think it was with PayPal or any bay, in fact, I think. I don't know. Anyway, I had to store the information, a request updating token or something. So I had two different tokens, one to query the API and then one to query to get an updated token. It's kind of funky. Uh, but this token is what we actually use. So then we are going to call our save Dropbox auth config. Did I put that in private? Oh yeah, because I don't, I don't want someone calling it directly. Okay, so this is saving the auth config variable, which is a script scoped variable. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to create that here in my invoke Dropbox authentication command line. But yeah, I'm going to implement parameter sets uh, because I don't want to save it one one place and then save it again in the other. Here, I'll, I'll show you what I mean. Command let binding. Let's see, parameter set name equals app. Yeah, we'll call it app. 
Uh, so then I'll copy this down to app secret and redirect URI. And then if someone is going to specify just We'll call it a token. We'll just call it token. Just a token. Uh, token. And then what we'll do is if ps commandlet dot set name equals app. So now we only have to save the token once. So we're gonna say auth or no, sorry, script auth conf or auth config equals ps custom or ps custom object what does my invoke dropbox api call it it calls it access token so we'll call it access token actually sorry just trying to be uh uh, have as consistent as possible here access token equals access token okay so now that we've got that auth config all we have to do is save dropbox off config drop oh i didn't actually load that okay so then we'll save it and We'll add a pass. Oh, I, I, I want to add a pass through as well. I'll add it to the invoke. I'll add it to the invoke. Uh, just in case someone wants to actually see the token. Um, I don't know why would someone wouldn't do that if they're specifying it specifically, but I'm just going to pass through. All right, and then if pass through is present, we're going to say off. Config. Okay, so what that means, now that I've done that, I'm going to move my requests. Yes, requests to my private folder. Uh, and the way my build works, uh, it'll put all the, it'll uh, export all the uh, commandlets in public, and all the private ones will be kept as private. Okay, so we've passed through, so save. So now. I need to do is refresh the page, unauthorize my live stream app, and then try my invoke commandment. Or something's not saved. What's not saved? Save Dropbox off config. I will save that. And in fact, I will load that into my session and make sure we've got the latest version of our requests loaded in as well. Okay, since so I'm not building the function yet it that auth config won't might not work the way we expect but we'll find out okay so invoke dropbox authentication so we'll do app first uh nope not a api call authentication did i not add it in i did not add it in okay so application then we'll go app key equals app key app secret equals app secret and redirect equals redirect and I will well actually we won't we won't specify the well we'll do the password just because why not okay so again I got the uh, login request I'm already logged in since I haven't created a new session in PowerShell uh, so I don't need to authenticate to my Dropbox account because it already has me uh, so we'll go ahead and allow and oh uh oh okay so yeah i tried to write it to c okay uh i'm gonna be willing to bet that get dropbox credentials i type out something big time okay so get dropbox off config or save dropbox off config that shit's in there that i screwed something up so save dropbox off config oh yeah get dropbox credentials save uh let's save i think it's path save path yeah yeah okay and we probably should also load that in and then save bam okay okay sweet so it should 
but it still output an access token. Oh, but it didn't save it, but it still output the token because it did get authorized because everything else worked. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and unauthorize that and try this again. Same thing from before. And again, getting that uh, OAuth request, allow, because custom not designed me method called get enumerator. Save Dropbox auth config. Okay, so I must have assumed that the auth uh, config was a hash table. Uh, yeah, I did. For each and okay. Okay, so auth config dot get enumerator. So instead of that, property auth config dot. Let's look at. It. I think it's auth config. Dot, I think it's PS object dot properties. Yeah. Okay. Okay, but this time, uh, okay. So, but it's going to be property dot. Oh, name. Same thing. Uh, but the value is actually going to be oh value. Huh. <laughs> okay. That that was easy. Okay. So we'll save that refresh that into our session and oh, re-deauthorize this live stream. Man, this, this guy just keeps getting into my Dropbox account. Okay, so let's try that again. Uh, yeah, just need to run this. And again, there's the OAuth prompt, allow. Oh, that looks good. Okay, so we got an access token. So that's the access token. So now what we should see is do I have that window open? I do not. Let me get one open. Let's see. So users, Anthony. So we should have a dot PS Dropbox credentials. And I think this will open it right up in VS Code. Yep. It's okay. So there is the encrypted string. Oh, that's a really long encrypted string. Uh, so now, and you notice it's in JSON format. Uh, just I don't know. JSON's easy to work with. There you go. That's why I did that. <laughs> um, so we just need to be able to retrieve. So uh, the use case that I'm a that I'm trying to make this work for is if you have uh, some like unattended script that needs to run, it needs to access that token, and so you need a command that is a get auth, get Dropbox auth config is what we'll call it. And that will be a public one. And what that will do is retrieve all that information. I don't think there'll be any parameters, but I'll throw a point at param block in there. Well, actually, you know what? I think uh, I did this here as well. OK. Oh, there's a silent option. That's right. Okay, so I'll, I'll, I'm just going to copy this over and I can walk you through it really quick. How it's going to relate. Okay, that didn't copy what I expected it to. Um, we'll use the mouse instead of the keyboard. Maybe that'll work this time. There we go. Okay. All right, so, uh, okay, so if auth config. So if, here we're going to do switch. Uh, so the switch silent because so by default this will output it, um, and I'm just having the silent switch in case you don't want it output. Uh, so, so if that that uh, script scope variable already exists, uh, then it's just going to output that that variable. That's it. Period. Otherwise, it's going to get drop. Uh, oh my goodness, Dropbox credential save path. Uh, and if uh, if it can, if that path exists, it's going to load the encrypted off coming from JSON. Uh, and you notice that I'm actually doing a for each property. So this works with multiple properties. So for something like, uh, I can just show you. Uh, so for something like uh, the Sherpa desk module, um, I actually have to store uh, three different parameters. Uh, and so that's it's, this code supports multiple parameters so that I can reuse it. <laughs> uh, that's I mean, that's 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 it. Uh, okay, so I'm so if 
that uh, doesn't exist. I'm creating a hash table. But we already determined that it was a PS custom object. Let's do this. PS custom object. And then what we'll have to do is uh, convert from, no, no, sorry, add member. So auth config add member. Member type note. Oh, sorry, not type name. Name is going to be that proper. Er, no, sorry, property name. And then the value is going to be. Uh, so I've got I've got the PS credential, the converting from. So I got convert to secure string property of value. So getting the value of it, and then getting the network credentials out of it kind of hacky way to do it but that's what works uh, and then if not silent then it outputs it as well so we should be able to just say get Dropbox off okay not draw a box get Dropbox off config and it outputs it and that script scope variable should work but let's test it uh, so to do that I actually have to build the module so let me just kind of can I just, I could probably just commit all of these as one. Wait, why isn't it showing me changes? Wait, give me a second here. Let me close all of these files. Okay, so that's weird. I'm used to it showing me the working tree so I can see what changes were made. Well, this one's a new one. Oh, well, I moved them. Okay, so that's why, that's why. Because it has a delete and it has an add. But for okay, now they're they're all either new or deleting ads. Okay, so now stores authentication locally, or not authentication. Uh, we called it the access token. That's right. Now stores access token. We'll speak properly English. The access token locally. So we'll, we'll commit those changes, and then I'm going to run a build, and build pass. Well, I, I don't have any tests yet, so not really much to fail, uh, but delete that out of there. Uh, but now with this PSM1 should be much bigger, so you notice here it's huge compared comparatively. Oh, well, some of it was removed. Uh, okay, so... Now, if we're going to start a new session, and what I'm going to do is I'm just going to build, make a scratch file here. I'll call it scratch PS1, so it's actually PowerShell. Okay, so what I'm going to do here is I'm just going to create the splat, invoke. Flat. To make this easy, in case I end up doing it multiple times, this is probably what I should have been doing before, but I didn't. Apps app key equals apps app secret equals, and they got our redirect URI equals, and then I'm gonna grab the or actually I know what the redirect URI is. direct to my blog and then from our live stream app I'm gonna grab the app key and the app secret and don't worry this app will be gone after we're done so this isn't gonna do any good oh to save it and we're gonna actually call that a variable okay uh, and we'll load that in so now we should be able to to okay, so it's already authorized. Actually, so first let, let's 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 test what happens if we try to load the credentials we saved. Uh, that should work. Uh, so I actually have to import the module first. Build slash ps Dropbox. Sweet. Okay, so now if we go get drop 
Troy. Oh my god, it's my fingers. Jit Dropbox auth config. We should. I wasn't expecting that. Okay. Okay, so that is in the ah PSM file, but that's in the git Dropbox auth config, auth config, add member, member type, property name. I probably just equals new. Oh, okay, yeah. System dot string. Did I? Maybe I should have you know validated this first. Okay, so I think we need to do that. Not bind a parameter string because it is null. Did I just run that one line? I just run that one line. No, okay, that's why. I was like, what? Okay, so now if we go get Dropbox, try get Dropbox auth, it should work. It's not recognized. Okay, because that was in the module, and we've just got to rebuild the module. Okay, so let's do that. And there we go. That took a little longer, longer than I expected. Okay. Uh, okay, so that changed. Okay, cool. That's one we actually wanted to make. So we want to remove module ps drop box import module ps drop or no 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 slash build ps drop box. Okay, so now we should be able to go get drop box auth config. Didn't specify silent. That is not what I expected. Okay, so let's actually look and make sure that file still has data, still has data. Okay, so what did I screw up? Okay, so I probably didn't add that member, member type, no property name is property dot name. So I'm looking at for each property in encrypted auth equals git content, member from JSON. Okay, so let's let's just walk through this. Dirt equals Caesars Anthony dot ps drop box. Encrypted so auth has the access token. Okay, so we're gonna create our auth config variable, and then for each property in well, let's let's look at this encrypted auth. Dot ps objects dot properties yes okay so name is property dot name I probably don't need it in quotes value is property convert to secure string property value dot get network credentials dot password I expect that to work unless it needs to be enclosed in double quotes. Let's find out. All right, so we'll run this for each loop and then look at auth config. Okay, why did that work? Did I did I change something? I just changed the name on it to not be a string? I don't know. All right, so let's, let's try it again. Try doing a build again. Okay, remove module ps drop box import module. Dropbox, and then what we'll do is get Dropbox, 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 auth config. Okay, so it worked that time. That was weird. I didn't expect that to actually fix it. Okay. Oh well, uh, so that actually worked. So now, without doing anything else besides loading our credentials, we should be able to go get Dropbox child item. And yes, list out files. Nice. Okay, cool. So that works. Uh, so the only other thing, remove module ps dropbox. So what the other thing I wanted to test is doing the invoke, making sure it saves properly. Uh, oh, that's my 500 error. Where am I at? Did I close the dropbox? Here it is. Okay, we're gonna deauthorize uh, the live stream app. Okay, so now, and let's delete that file just to be just to start from scratch. 
Uh, so now let's remove module PS Dropbox. No mod. Oh, I already. <laughs> Typing the exact command I just ran. Import module build slash ps dropbox. And so now if we run git dropbox dropbox auth config, I think I might need to handle my keyboard a little differently. You know, that's why. Okay. Uh, so somewhere it said that's that's uh, off config to not be a global variable or did I set that to be not be a global variable somewhere um, that's the save uh, let's see get Dropbox authentic or er, get Dropbox auth config yeah I set it as a script scope hmm. I'm gonna chalk that up to just having that variable set by me, I honestly don't remember. So we'll just remove module ps dropbox. Did I delete the right file? I'm really tripping here. Um, I'm not sure why it was doing that. Okay, so let's. I, so I blew, blew away my PowerShell session. We're going to try this again. Build slash PS. Okay, so we're going to import it, and we're going to say git drop box. If this works, I'm just going to be blown away. Okay, so that's what should happen. Okay. Okay, I don't know what was going on. Uh, okay, so let's, let's reload our invoke splat. So we'll invoke drop box uh, authentication invoke splat and what this should do yes I deauthorized it right sorry now I've got me got me second guessing what I'm doing <laughs> so this should do is get our authentication token okay so ah so since it's a new PowerShell session it doesn't have uh, that that web object doesn't have my stuff stored Okay, so then I gotta get my password out of LastPass, which no, I won't share with you guys. Okay, so what this should now do is, yep, before you connect to Slack, make sure you trust this developer. Livestream app would like to access folders, allow. Oh, huh, so we got the new item output. I don't like that. So we're going to I'm going to out no voles. <clears throat> it won't affect anything else, but. Oh, so it created it and then it out. Okay. Okay. So, but now we should have, so that auth config variable is, is script scope. So we can't access it. But if we do a get Dropbox auth config, it should return it. And it should be in this file as well. There we go. There's that access token. Uh, well, there's it's an, an un, uh, secure string. Uh, okay, so now we should be able to drop straight into git dropbox. Oh my goodness, git dropbox, git dropbox child item uh, slash test. So we'll get this. There we go. Okay, sweet. That's awesome. Whew, I need some water. I've been talking to myself too much today. Okay, so the last thing um, that I'll do is uh, I'll build the most recent one, first of all. Well, actually, I'm going to get rid of my scratch. Well, here was what I'll do. I'll put that in my clipboard in case I need it. I delete my scratch uh, and then build it. Excuse me. There we go. And, you know, what's really funny is uh, so the PSGet module has that has this bug where it adds or prepends ps excuse me ps get underscore to the module name just the way it, it deals with the updating the mod module manifest uh, i submitted an issue for it and actually fixed it and then haven't updated yet <laughs> okay so what what changes did we make out and old and 
Oh, yeah, that actually works now. Okay, sweet. Uh, fixed. Oh, yeah, fix the get auth to properly create the auth config variable and return it. Okay, sweet. So, uh, Okay, so what I'm gonna do is I'll, I'll push that so the latest version is up on that GitHub link, github.com slash techsnip slash ps dropbox. Um, you guys are welcome to contribute to it for anyone that's watching. Um, we don't have a contributing uh, template uh, for TechSnips yet. So um, reach out, submit a PR, or actually create an issue and we can start with that if you're interested. Um, otherwise, I mean, we'll be developing it as we need new features. Uh, don't have a lot of time to um, add other things at the moment. Uh, we just needed this to be able to work with um, uh, work with getting some data out of Dropbox. And so I think right now all it does is uh, it can get child items out of folders. Uh, it can actually download a folder. That's what this get Dropbox file was. Makes me wish there was a download for in PowerShell. Um, I can download zips, um, and I can get an item's metadata, so get information about a spe specific file. Let me, you know, I've got a few extra minutes before I got to go. Uh, let's let's well, let's check this out. So I've done get Dropbox. Let me import the module first. And you know, I'm, I'm sitting here running this git dropbox auth config. I could probably build that into all of the command lines. So if that auth config variable doesn't exist, then get it. But that's a that's a that's a wish list thing right now. Okay, so if we do a git dropbox oh joy, git drop box auth config. Or right, just did that. Git dropbox, sorry. Uh, child item. So, so by default, that'll list anything else that's in the root path, and then we could specify, since this is a folder, we could specify slash test, and that's the images I've got in my Dropbox, which looks like uh, this. So I've got this the test folder, and those are the images I've got in it. And so that, that's, oh, sorry, I just hit the mic. Uh, so that's what we're looking at here. And... Uh, for one of these, if we wanted to say take this path and say get uh, drop box item metadata and pass it either a path or an ID because you know some of these have IDs as well. Um, parameter not set. Oh, so I have parameter sets one for ID, one for path. So I actually have to tell it which ones I'm passing. So path, so that's going to return just uh, that item's data, and we can also get Dropbox folder. This is pretty cool. Uh, or get Dropbox file. So get Dropbox file, and we'll specify path. And we'll do the same path. And then destination is going to be, I'll just put it in dot slash image dot JPG. Oh, what? Okay, so obviously I don't. I didn't write these to be so easily remembered. Interesting. So note to self, these probably should be done a little better. So path, maybe we can do some, okay, that is that is really strange. I don't know why it's, did I, evoke web request, did I, I probably passed it the wrong file path? No, no, that's good. Get the leaf item. That is really strange. Could I find a part of the path where I don't want it looking for? Oh, 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 oh. And so it's because the destination requires a folder. Oh my goodness. Okay, so I probably should get destined. So this should work if I specify just a folder. So what I probably should do is, and you can see I got the image there, so we can go dot dot image. And bam, there it is. So that's hey, that's just a, a router I used to have listed on Craigslist. <laughs> um, and so that's what Git Dropbox file does. Actually, downloads it, and then the other one, Git Dropbox folder zip. 
So this will zip up a folder, so you pass it for the path a folder. Yeah, yeah, just a router I used to know. <laughs> uh, and then uh, destination, we're going to do the same thing again. Specify a folder, let's see if this actually works. It does. So now we've got a test.zip, which can I reveal and explore? So there you go, so test. And then it's got that test folder and all the images in it. So that's all that Dropbox module does currently. Uh, and of course, we'll as as we need to use it, we'll add more uh, more functionality to it. And again, if if you guys listening, watching, have any interest in using it or improving it, absolutely uh, submit an issue. Uh, do you compress or .NET call the impression? Oh, oh, so that's that's actually a great question. So it's actually the answer is neither, uh, because I, I'll show you in the API docs. Uh, so. Uh, Dropbox actually does the compression on their end. So what I'm doing is I'm telling Dropbox I want a folder and it's zipping it and sending it to me. Uh, so in download zip is the method that I'm calling. Uh, so file download zips and it takes uh, a path of just a folder. Uh, and so that, and that's what we're looking at here. And so in the, oh yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Um, in PowerShell, uh, so the way I've got this, let me get this out of here. Uh, so I've got a, it, 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 it wants a, a post uh, method since I guess I'm not asking for, for uh, normal data, I'm asking for actually binary data or whatever you wanna call it. Uh, and so uh, I have to send an argument in the header telling it what I want, path equals, and then the path that I'm sending it. Uh, and you can see that either it's ID, ID or path. So if, if I'm specifying an ID for a folder, I got to say by ID. And if it's, or sorry, the, um, I actually don't remember why I did that. Oh yeah, by path. So if it's, if it's, so if I'm specifying the path, uh, then I'll, I'll split the path and then actually call it the same thing locally. That's what I'm doing. Um, I could ask for a specific local file. That might be a better idea. Uh, but anyway, uh, so it's doing the invoke Dropbox API call um, against that, uh, files slash download zip resource, doing a post, giving it that headers. and the, But this one is, so most of the other calls are all API to Dropbox. This one's content.dropbox. And I've got to spat, pass it the content type of application octet stream and then tell it where I want. And then here, I'll actually show you what, what the, I had to do a little something different in the invoke Dropbox API call. So if the subdomain is content, I'm using invoke web request instead of invoke rest method. And the reason is because invoke web request has an out file option. Otherwise, um, so invoke rest method. Uh, so in Windows PowerShell, so this is a Windows PowerShell versus PowerShell core problem. So the returned data is uh, here. Like I think I can show you. Uh, so the returned data, uh, let's see, metadata, it actually passes, uh, so invoke web request actually passes the that stream as a response header, and invoke rest method does not have a way to return a response header. Web request does, but web request also has an out file. But if I were doing this on PowerShell core, PowerShell core invoke rest method actually does have, ooh, it's it, it, a, a, a parameter, it's a switch to include the response headers. Um, and I, I don't remember what that was off the top of my head, but um, uh, for the most part, I think we're using this in Windows PowerShell um, and I wanted it to work in both. So this, this what you see here will work in both. Uh, so that answers your question. Yeah, it actually uses the long answer, uh, uses the API. The API zips it and then sends you the zip, which is nice. Instead of getting a whole bunch of file files and then downloading them one by one and then zipping it up. And um, I should also say that this is different than doing and then getting a Dropbox share URL. So if you have a Dropbox share URL, you can actually, <clears throat> you can still use invoke web request against that URL or URI. Uh, we can go back to the URI versus the URL. Um, or I believe that, is it the bits transfer? That's actually a little faster. 
but that's I mean that's that's a whole other ball game than using the API. This is using the API, not a shared folder. So I, I guess and I, now you got me thinking. Uh, we can probably share. Can we share using the API? That would be cool. Templates, file requests, create uh, hmm, files. Uh, I mean, I'll have to do some more research on um, how to. Oh, there we go. Sharing. Uh, get shared link file. So let's I mean, let's take a look at that. I got a few minutes before I got to go. Um, but let's see. Downloads the shared linked links file from a user's Dropbox. Let's look at the response. The returns. URI. Okay. Yeah. So you can actually share a file. You can get a download. So, I mean, that can be implemented. I wonder if you can do the same. Get shared link metadata. I'll probably do it for a folder too. Unshare file. Well, that's cool. Unshare folder. Okay, so there must be a share. Did I get? Did I miss? Get folder metadata. Get shared link file. Add file. Maybe it's an add folder. I don't know. I mean, this is gonna be something that we have to play with a little bit. Want to be able to do, but I'm, I'm gonna guess and say that we're probably gonna need that as well if we want to be. Um, download it. Well, we're just downloading. We have to come up with a way to upload. So I'll probably have a an upload. The up, uh, upload isn't a verb for a, isn't a verb in PowerShell. Um, well, I, an acceptable verb. Nah, there's come up with something. Anyway. Uh, thanks for everyone that that uh, that tuned in. Uh, if you guys if you guys do like watching me, um, let me know. Uh, and if this time or whatever time I started doesn't work for you, let me know what times do. I'm really flexible with my days, and I'm going to try to stream a little more often. I had a couple of people ask me about um, about how when, when I was going to stream again, so that's why I'm doing it. And it's fun. I mean, as you can see, it's nice having a, a conversation with somebody instead of myself the whole time. <laughs> Otherwise, I sit here with just music on and stare at a screen all day. Um, so anyway, uh, thanks for tuning in. Um, and... I think somebody asked me about oh uh, i i will uh let's see i'm scrolling through the chat i th uh, i will I'll, I'll do a post in my blog on how to um and how i set up my setup uh it's not perfect but it works and if you haven't streamed before it can be a pain to figure out um uh, i i got lucky enough i had a friend of mine that that uh i don't know if you call it streams professionally but um, streams and makes a bit of money doing it, and, and she recommended OBS or Streamlabs OBS. This was what I'm using. So, oh, anyway, I'm just burning time now. So, thanks guys for tuning in, and gals. Uh, hey, thanks for chatting. I appreciate it. I like I like the the back and forth. So, oh, catch me on Twitter, the the Posh Wolf. I post every time I stream, uh, or follow me here on Twitch. I obviously post er, will post on Twitch every time I stream as well. So, anyway. Oh, thanks guys.